Welcome to the 12th episode of Accessibility Now, stories about accessibility in Georgia. Accessibility Now is a podcast produced by the Statewide Independent Living Council of Georgia. Whether a child may have broken a leg at the soccer game, it's helpful. So not only is it for people with disabilities, it's universal. I'm your host, Desi Gillespie, and today we're talking about Phoenix Station, a housing development unlike many in the Atlanta area. For one, it's affordable. That's not simply a value judgment based on your thoughts of the price. It's affordable housing, meaning rents reflect the average income of people in the area. It's intended to house people who work in low-paying but essential industries in any given community. And in the fight for independent living, affordable housing is essential. Many people with disabilities are on fixed incomes or work similarly low-wage jobs. But, regrettably, there's not a lot of affordable housing being built, and there's even less that's being built as accessible. Here's Shelley Simmons, Executive Director of the Statewide Independent Living Council of Georgia. Unfortunately, it is a numbers game. It's a money game. And a lot of people just don't want, I guess they don't see the profitability in affordable housing. I believe that when you have individuals who need affordable housing, they are dependable, reliable tenants. Once an individual, uh, especially with a disability or senior, finds some affordable, accessible, and let's not forget safe housing. Uh, whether it's in regards to uh, the materials that are being used, mold-free, and within their communities. Everybody wants to feel safe within their community. Uh, But trying to get people to understand that the economic gap in between people is just widening. And so with affordable housing, uh, there's definitely a a dire need for it, but it all depends on who is willing to, I guess, just do the right thing, and that's really what it comes down to. Enter LDG Development, a primarily affordable housing development company, and their Phoenix Station property. It's a seven-story apartment complex on the outskirts of Decatur, just outside downtown Atlanta. Phoenix Station is still under construction, on track to finish in early 2024, with housing applications hopefully opening in December. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. At this point in the story, it's 2017, and there's still a long way to go before Phoenix Station breaks ground. Their initial location for the development was rejected, but soon the city of Decatur got back to them about a new site near the Kensington Marta Station. Naturally, Silk was interested in the creation of more affordable, accessible housing, and they wanted to show support for the proposed LDG development when the project went public in community meetings. Residents within that area did not want affordable housing. As with so many of these developments um, and and in in the industry that we're in, we ran into something called uh, NIMBY. That's Chris Bird. Director of Development in the Southeast for LDG. And you might have heard that term. It's, it's not in my backyard. And everybody's for affordable housing and wants to talk about it um, until they don't. And, 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 you know, everybody wants to do it somewhere else. It was difficult, but eventually disgruntled residents stepped out of the project's way and some even supported it. Chris says that Silk was instrumental in getting the community to accept the development. Shelly is, is very persuasive <laughs> and she's very strong in her in her voice. And, um, you know, we've, we've just embraced that. Um, and, it, and it's really made our product better through her voice. We feel like we have a stronger voice as well. Um, we always educate on affordability, but but, you know, with 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 their help, they're the experts. So with their help, we can we can really increase that voice and understanding and education of, of what this type of housing is for folks and who we serve and how we serve. When we're talking about NIMBY, um, a lot of that just comes from 
fear of the unknown. And when you put yourself out like that, like Silk does, you know, the converse, it, it become you become known. Um, you know, when I'm when I'm talking about affordability, like that's a lot of people. You know, I talk about first responders, I talk about entry level teachers and talk about baristas, you know, and I talk about the people that serve the community, that serve us every day, that want to live in the community. And and I think the 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 um the message there really overlaps. The fearlessness that Silk has uh, of just putting themselves out there and letting them be, see, you know, letting themselves be seen. And, and and here we are. We're not the boogeyman. Same as us. You know, uh, uh, just because I make a certain amount of money, I'm not out here to harm you or rob you or, you know, crime and all this stuff. Uh, I, I think I think when people can see uh, not only here, but really see and understand who we're serving, it really does help, uh, you know, to, to tamp down that NIMBY because. And it's not like, you know, oh, we're we're not against these. It's just it, it just helps to see that we're like everybody else. You know, we just kind of maybe live a little bit different. You have different needs on our daily, daily journey. But again, the fearlessness and, and, and the willingness and the openness to be able to come into these conversations into into a hot topic. You know, I mean, these these things can get heated. And again, I think it's the it's the fear of the unknown that we that we're always up against. And and once people know that fear begins to go away, the voice begins to soften. You know, the, the, these meetings always, ne- they never get bigger. They're always the biggest that, you know, at the beginning. And then they kind of, they kind of, you know, uh, shrink a little bit over time because people are understanding more and they, and they become less fearful of what they don't know. So I, I just think it's important, you know, and, and we walk hand in hand with them, you know, um, we're talking about one thing, they're talking about one thing, but we're really talking about just, just like, human experience and what that might look like in different, in different settings for different people. Phoenix station is a new step for LDG. Their past developments have been less accessible with only 30% of the units able to be visited while using a wheelchair. Regulations actually only require 5% of affordable housing units to be mobility accessible and only 2% of units to be visual or hearing accessible. Chris said that LDG always tried to go beyond those requirements, but now they feel an even greater commitment to accessibility. Accessibility and affordability have always been on the radar for us. We understand the importance of how they overlap, but it wasn't really until we started to uh, engage in conversation with Silk that we realized how big that gap is between accessibility and affordability. Either units are affordable, but, but not accessible, or they are uh, NOAA, which is another acronym, naturally occurring affordable housing. It's older, so the site may not be accessible. This new building type uh, for us, uh, the, 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 the vertical um, construction with elevators, um, you know, inherently makes that building um, fully accessible, or at least the potential to be fully accessible. Every unit is visible, every one. 244 units is visible. It also gives us the opportunity to do more um, of them fully accessible, meaning we install the grab bars, we drop the sinks, we, we, you know, it's fully, fully accessible. So the building is currently under construction, but, um, you know, we, we've kept our conversation going with Silk and they've just been really great. We've had uh, one-off conversations with them about accessibility looks different to different people. So what, what can we do um, to, to, to make it more uh, universal? I guess some of the designs more universal. Um, and and they gave us some ideas, you know, uh, and and we've taken a lot of that to heart. Our conversations with Silk really deepened our understanding about how affordability and accessibility overlap. A lot of people with 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 um, uh, accessible needs are also on fixed incomes. And while our other developments may be thirty percent accessible, where are the buildings that are one hundred percent accessible? Where are those elevator served buildings that it, that can serve uh, a, a bigger population? Um, we're always looking for the for the bigger net, you know. Um, how can we serve more people, and, and who are the people um, with the, with the greatest needs that need more service? And that conversation has really gotten uh, deeper at, at LDG. Visitability is a key, though underrepresented, issue in most housing. In one of our recent episodes, we discussed the Silk-funded documentary Inclusion in which activist Mark Johnson mentions visitability is an often unrealized part of having a truly accessible society. Here's Shelley on the importance of Phoenix Station being 100% visitable. 
as well as having 100% of units set up for easy accessibility modifications. Everyone should be included in daily activities as far as visiting with neighbors and friends um, and not have to be centrally located. Everybody in one area, uh, a person with a disability or senior would want to be able to get around someone's residence to, to interact and to mingle. And so you think about things like that not to be excluded or segregated in a way that is good for you, just your mental health. I think the way that LDG has set up this design, this just gonna be a model for others to follow. And I'm glad that they're putting in forth the effort in the beginning where it's much easier to do instead of trying to go back and modify should somebody ask about accessibility, it's here. And whether you may have to have an elderly parent come to stay or visit, it's helpful. Whether a child who may have broken a leg at the soccer game, it's helpful. So not only is it for people with disabilities, it's universal. And I think if we take that concept, people will see that it's much easier and again, just doing the right thing to have accommodations and modifications and just the complete development uh, already in place. Another key feature is the nearby Kensington Marta Station, which is a short, accessible walk from Phoenix Station. For people in affordable housing, both with disabilities and without, it's a crucial amenity for living in Metro Atlanta. I cannot stress how important that is, whether uh, for people to be able to just go about their daily lives, whether it's just going to the store, entertainment, to a doctor's office. You don't necessarily have to wait on non-emergency medical transportation or um, private invitation. And with it being so close uh, to the martyr station, you don't have to worry about changing or crossing major streets. And unlike some developers, LDG continues to own their properties for longer periods of time, working through management companies to run the day-to-day. -day. Other companies may sell their development immediately, giving it over to owners who manage the property poorly. People with disabilities often run into problems with managers or rental offices who may discriminate against them as renters. The Statewide Independent Living Council in 2013 participated in a housing study. And we um, put together teams of individuals, one without a disability, one with a disability, and sent them to the exact same apartment complex or development. And they went through the renting process, touring the property, wanting to know what was uh, needed in order for them to rent. And ironically, we made sure that the individual with the disability had a better job, had a better income. That was just basically more stable. And it was really shocking to me to see the discrimination that individuals with disability face. So training is definitely needed. And I think it should be something that's mandatory. Housing applications for Phoenix Station are predicted to open in December. And while Silk can't reserve or guarantee units for independent living consumers, they will encourage them to apply for Phoenix Station residency alongside the usual Section 8 processes. Going forward, Silk will be advising LDG on accessibility for all of their Georgia developments. Several projects already in progress have been influenced by the guidance of Silk and the lessons learned from Phoenix Station. It's not like a scheduled quarterly meeting, but we'll, we'll meet. Shelly will reach out and, or I'll reach out and, and, and we'll just catch up on what's in our pipeline. What does that look like for Silk? What can we be doing better? Uh, but but it's, a, it's a conversation that's just really enriched uh, what, what I feel like LDG does on the affordable housing side. You know, we do this great housing. 
and 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 we know how to do it but it's it it really elevates what we do um when we can when we can engage groups like silk um when we can look for uh, you know other other opportunities too to elevate the housing like educational opportunities or after school programs or um healthcare opportunities or talk about i don't know it could be as simple as talk about business literacy and resume building and credit credit enhancement and things like that um but but we look we're really starting to look at at ways we can plug in um, and, and elevate the housing, uh, plug in uh, diff- different kinds of services, and then elevate the housing through conversations like we and relationships like we have with Silk. I am excited to see the completed project, to see it finally come to pass, and to see somebody that was um, an organization or a development company like LDG see the bigger picture and do the right thing. I want to make sure that we sound the whistles and give them as much props as possible and hopes that we can find others to do the same thing. And that's where we'll end today's episode. We hope you'll be looking forward to the completion of Phoenix Station sometime in early 2024. Thank you to Chris and Shelley for speaking with us for today's episode. And thank you for listening to Accessibility Now, stories about accessibility in Georgia. Accessibility Now is a podcast produced by the Statewide Independent Living Council of Georgia. If you want to find out more about that organization, you can visit us at silkga.org. That's S-I-L-C-G-A dot O-R-G. This has been your host, Desi Gillespie, And I just want to close by reminding you that a Georgia that includes everyone is better for all of us.